CBD. Okay, so we'll open the meeting and um, I'll move the, uh, the apologies for Councillor Newman and Member Honek for, for absence on Council business. Board, Councillor Filipina, and apologies from Councillor Collins, Lee, and IS, AMSB Chair Tybury for lateness. So we have a seconder, Councillor Simpson. All those in favour? Aye. Thank you. Declaration of interest. Any declarations of interest? There are no declarations. The confirmation of the minutes from the 1st of June. If someone could do that. Yep. Councillor Simpson, seconded by Councillor Darby. Thank you. No changes, no corrections. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? <laughs> there are none against. Petitions? There are none. Public input? None. Local board input? None. Extraordinary items? None. That are no. Notice of motion? None. And now we have John Bishop, Treasurer. Item number nine, review of the diversified financial assets portfolio. John? Excuse me. Yes, good morning. Um, <coughs> through you, Chair, just a bit of background. So this is a fund of uh, stocks and bonds and cash. Uh, we received approval to divest $100 million in the 2016-17, so this current financial year, and to divest a further $100 million in the next financial year, 2017-18. Uh, this will leave the fund at around um, $130 million. Uh, this paper is seeking to uh, fully divest those funds. Um, now this asset, it's a, it's a non-strategic asset. Um, the divestment is consistent with the professional advice that we received uh, from Cameron Partners and Ernst and & Young in the reports. So essentially what we're doing is, I guess, exchanging those funds for cash, and that cash can be used to uh, be invested in infrastructure. Uh, so essentially, you can look at it in two ways. One is it will reduce debt, or well, secondly, we will simply use those funds to invest in infrastructure. Um, the cost of administering the fund every year, direct costs around about one and a half million per annum. Uh, there's also indirect costs as far as staff time and things like that. Uh, the expected return in the long run is around 7% per annum, so that does slightly exceed our, our long-run expected cost of funds due to the different risk nature of the assets we're investing in. Uh, a long-term ex expected cost of funds will be around 5.5-6%. So happy to take any, any questions. Happy to move, Mr Chairman. Well, Casey. Um, read your report very carefully. Could you give me some of the benefits of keeping the fund, please? Seems to be missing from your report. Mm. Uh, through you, Chair. I mean, uh, the, the one benefit of keeping the fund is it does form part of our liquidity, so a backstop facility. Although it's fair to say that um, the most common way to do that with large organisations would be to have a additional or a bank standby facility, uh, which would be a more efficient and uh, similar from an administration point of view, but it does form part of our, our liquidity. And any other reasons why we should hold on to it? It's just that I felt your report was was supporting the divestment, and normally we would have both sides of the argument. Yeah. Uh, again, through you, Chair, look, this is just clearly an asset which is non-strategic to Council. It doesn't help us deliver services that we're required to deliver. Um, Again, it's it's quite unusual for an organisation with such significant debt to have on the opposite side um, an extensive investment. Sorry, I was asking for arguments in support <laughs> of keeping it. There are very few. You've given me one. Point. I'm He's looking for another one. You're just struggling to get those. Keep going, John. I am struggling to give you any more <laughs> rationale for why we should keep it. That's an honest answer. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. I'll give you some. Okay, well, John, I'll give it. Councillor Walker, Wayne. Sure. Um, if, we, um, if we look at the performance of the fund over time, and I'm referring to the performance to date, how has the, uh, the fund assisted us in our ability to raise uh, debt? 
because of the, the revenue that we've got from the fund and the relationship with the council's debt to revenue ratio. Again, through you, Chair, the existence of the fund hasn't helped us raise debt. Um, in fact, because of the fund, we've had to raise more debt than we would otherwise have had if we didn't have the fund. Yeah. So uh, when the rating agencies look at this, um, the only benefit they give the fund is that it assists our liquidity, but also they give that a haircut. What I mean by that is that if an event was to happen, things like stocks and bonds are, are likely to be difficult to sell, so they won't give it the same amount of um, liquidity credit, for want of a better expression, than they would, say, for a, a pure uh, standby facility or just having cash in the bank on call or in government bonds. So it's, um, it hasn't assisted our credit rating. Um, let me express it another way. Has it assisted our ability to raise debt, given that the, there's a, a better ratio of um, revenue to, to debt than we would otherwise get? Um, through you, Chair, now the, the ratio of revenue to debt um, isn't significantly impacted um, on a material scale by having this portfolio. At the end of the day, it's a, it's, it's a negative that ratio because at the end of the day, the debt is arguably when this portfolio was 330 million, 330 million higher than it needed to be. The revenue when it was 330 million, assuming an average return of 7%, which is a long run expected return, was about 23 million. And John, the uh, cost of the debt, um, the um, equivalent Wayne. amount of debt that we were paying the interest on would have been what, five or six percent? So net, what, one percent? Through you, million? Chair, give or take one percent, yeah, yep. approximately. So approximately. And, and, that, and that reflects the fact that um, because we're investing in assets which are, I guess, riskier than investing in council debt, you would expect that return to be higher over the long run. That's a simple risk return trade off. Matthew, did you want to say something? Yeah, it was just another clarification about something. Oh, sorry, in your oh, just Matthew oh, first, Kathy. Ma oh, sorry, I thought I heard right. Kathy. Sorry. Yep. It's all right. Through the chair, uh, just to um, Councillor Walker's question as well. Um, so on the revenue, and and the credit rating agencies look through this. Just remember, there's actually two components. So there's 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 dividend streams coming through from the portfolio, and interest receipts in terms of bond investments. But a large amount of the revenue comes back via uh, forecast and assumed capital gain on share investments through time. So when the credit rating agencies think about our debt to revenue ratio, they don't look at that as hard cash revenue. You see what I'm saying? So actually the cash revenue coming off the portfolio is pretty modest, probably a little bit below our <coughs> cost of debt. But what you're Assuming here, and, and John's made the point, over long periods, you're talk, typically talking about a decade or two when you're thinking about safe equity investing, you've got a level of capital gain coming through as well that can be realised through time. But in terms of how our debt to revenue ratios work, it's very hard to factor in that non-cash revenue into the equation. I have Councillor Hulse, Darby, Casey, Mike Lee and Councillor Fletcher. So just a quick question, Mr Chair, and also just checking I've got it right. So in essence, the whole issue turns on there are benefits in the portfolio, but they're outweighed by the opportunities foregone should we pay off debt is in essence what I think we're saying. Yes, Mr Chair, that's a, that's a good way to think about it. It's the opportunity cost of maintaining this fund it means we... Um, arguably can't build some of the infrastructure that uh, Auckland Council needs. Okay. So we will hear, I'm sure, in the debate, Mr Chair, a lot about the so-called rainy day fund, um, and I'll speak to this in the debate. I think the rainy day is here. Should a rainy day event happen, however, can you just remind me what our call-in, the sum that's available via call-in? I think we were given the figure about $800 million that's available should the issues or need arise. So, Mr. Chair, I think you're referring to the, the standby, standby bank lines we have. Yeah. Yeah, at the moment, they're 900 million, 900. Um, with um, including water care as well. That'll grow to about 1.2 billion of available bank facilities going forward. 
So I think that's a really important figure, Mr Chair, that just over one billion is available as a standby facility. Let's not lose sight of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hull. So we're still on questions. Councillor Darby. Yeah, just following up on that point, so for me, I'm comfortable with the recommendation subject to just some explanation on paragraphs 28 to 30, the liquidity support. For me, that's the critical uh, caveat. Uh, so just in terms of that, the, the, the DFAP is part of that liquidity support, um, and it's, well, it reinforces that, um, or offers support to that treasury function. But, um, and it contributes to that overall calculation for liquidity. So at paragraph 30, we note that, or you note that some additional liquidity may be required in the future, may be required in the future. You've just uh, pointed out that the standby facility has increased from 800 to $900 million. Is that additional liquidity provided through the standby fund? or? or can it be further provided for through the standby fund? Um, or through facility, you, sorry. Yeah, through you, Chair. Yes, yes, we can um, provide that additional liquidity support through an increased standby or back committed line. Okay, so that's where we're covered in terms of liquidity support, which by pulling this fund, we're uh, beefing up our standby facility <coughs> to protect us going forward. Through you, Chair, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Councillor Casey. Uh, John, I just wanted you to comment on, you've attached an excerpt from Cameron Partners report, Cameron Partners report, and I'm looking at our page 17, and it's a sentence um, from Cameron Partners that I'd like you to just to expand on. It says here, the rationale for holding the DFAP look even weaker and the rationale for holding AIAL shares, which is our airport shareholding, <laughs> which assumes then that our rationale for holding the airport shares is weak. Can you just comment on that? Because it's part of you, you've placed this before us today. It is weak. Through you, Chair, I think Camera Partners would run a similar argument with the, with the airport shares. They would um, argue that, again, um, for council to provide its core services, they would argue that holding a 22.3 or 22.4 per cent stake in the airport isn't necessary to achieve those outcomes. Right. And in fact, selling that stake or selling down that stake to maybe 10 per cent, council could use those additional funds to invest in infrastructure, which is a core service which council needs to provide. So as our council advisor, what do you make of that in terms of, um, <coughs> is it a weak argument as they suggest to hold AIAL shares? I'll, um, well, we'll let John answer that, but uh, Councillor Casey, remember we're not discussing that. I know, but he's placed this before as it's part of the public record, and I'm questioning that. Yep, yep, but then the Cameron, it is a Cameron mm. Partners report. And, and he's put it before us yeah, today. Through, through you, Chair. I mean, Cameron Partners' arguments, are, 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 I guess, are, are similar to what they're arguing for the DFAP. Is they're not core to Council delivering its objectives, given our balance sheet is constrained. We're better to use our funds to supply services that the private sector isn't going to provide. What they'd argue is that our holding in the airport, um, we don't have a great deal of influence over the airport. There's no magic in 22.3%. Um, you could argue there's more sense in 10.1% since it's a blocking stake. Um, and my question through the chair wasn't about what Cameron Partners think, it was about what you as our financial advisor think <coughs> of what Cameron Partners are telling us today here in this report, so that we have a weak argument for holding Auckland yep. Airport point, point of order, so, Mr Chair. Yep, point of order. I think we're moving yep. somewhat away from the uh, agenda item. Um, what we're being asked to look at this uh, diversified portfolio and that's the line of question I think that should occur rather than what run. might happen, some speculation about the airport. Totally agree with, with you. With respect, T totally agree. the no, officer no, no. placed this before Casey, us Councilor today yeah, and Councilor it mentions Casey. the DFAP in the same sentence yep. as Auckland Airport shares and our weak no, no. rationale for holding them. They're quoting Cameron in the thing. Now, mm. John can answer the question, anyway. but in relation to the diversified investment portfolio only at the stage. John. Yeah, yeah through, through you, Chair, um, I, t I totally support the um, Cameron Partners' recommendation as far as the DFAP. Councillor Lee, Mike. 
Can, uh, thank you. Can you uh, tell us uh, how much is the average rate of interest the council is paying on debt? So you're the question was the average rate we're paying on debt. Mm. Um, I mean, the average cost of funds right now is roughly, call it five and a half percent, give or take. The marginal cost is slightly lower than that. Um, Simon Allen, who was the former chair of Auckland Council Investments Limited, um, did oppose the transfer of this fund from Auckland Council Investments Limited. Um, as we are aware, um, his point um, is that selling assets which earn, which have earned 9.1 per cent per annum, even in the wake of the GFC, uh, to repay debt, which is 4.5 per cent, is destroying value. What's your comment on that? Through you, Chair. Um, I mean, that return, which is the return since inception, so it's after the GFC, um, when the markets did remarkably well. Uh, look, look, we can come up with a number of investment opportunities which, over the long run, are likely to have a return which exceeds Auckland Council's cost of debt. That's because they have a greater risk element. Um, the reality is we're balance sheet constrained, um, and also it's not our core business. That's right. Can I, can I ask a, a supplementary, Mr Chairman? Um, in those early years, and in the wake of, of the GFC, um, which overshadowed the start of the Super City, um, the fund under Auckland Council Investments Limited earned 9.1 per cent. Um, over the last year since this council has taken over, um, it's earned 5.8 per cent. Can you explain that? Yeah, through you, Chair, yes, I can. I think this is a, this is a point, Councillor, you've made before. Um, look, the answer is that we manage the portfolio in exactly the same manner in which Auckland Council Investment Limited managed it. So the same investment advisor, the same range of fund managers. So the return simply reflects the market returns. If you look at our benchmark, which is effectively uh, an index, um, the return of the fund, because it's so well diversified, has matched the uh, benchmark return of the index within 0.1 or 0.2% over the course of its history. So um, the fact that the portfolio management has shifted from ACIL to council has not in any way impacted the quality of returns upwards or downwards. Well, they have gone down mysteriously, and there's meant to be, I understand, a Trump bump um, in the American economy where much of this investment is. Could it be that the elements of the fund that have already been stripped out um, were more high earning parts of the fund? Could that be a, an answer to the strange discrepancy between 9.1 and 5.8 since the council took over? Through you, Chair, I think you just need to go back to the benchmark and index returns, which you'll find are not as high as they were a couple of years ago. Anything. Yeah, thank you, John. That's the same answer you've given twice. Do you want to say anything, Matthew? Uh, yeah, look, through the Chair, um, uh, so what the Treasurer has said is there is no mystery. So he's explained the returns in regards to a well-understood practice around the investment management industry, and that's discussion around indexing and benchmarks. So there's nothing mysterious there. The point that's been made is the return available from markets in the last couple of years has been lower than it was in the three years prior to that. Councillor Fletcher. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I wonder if you could give us a brief history to this fund. A brief history to this fund? Uh, through you, Chair, look, I can't give a, a substantive history. Um, I've only been at Council coming up three years. Um, but I understand it, it, it's um, related to funds of a, of a prior body to Auckland Council, I think, from the sale of some assets. Um, and those assets were invested in stocks and bonds and cash, and that's grown over time. So maybe I can assist. 20 years ago exactly, there was a recognition that there was an infrastructure deficit in Auckland, and there was a very hard fought for battle to establish infrastructure Auckland. And these funds have grown out of that. And I would suggest that if you go back to the purpose of those funds that enabled the North Shore Busway, um, 
in a lot of the public transport we have now, uh, you might care to give careful consideration to how we use them going into the future because they were intended to address the infrastructure deficit that Auckland had 20 years ago and continues to have. Through you, Chair, I think that's exactly what these funds are earmarked for is infrastructure yep. spend in Auckland. Mr Chairman, I'm sorry to labour that point, but it's the point on which I resigned as a Minister of Cabinet because these funds were going to be given away at the time, and so I've taken a very close interest in these funds because I could see that Auckland would require them. Where did they come from? Um, just to reinforce John's um, answer there, so if you look at um, paragraph number six, the first sentence, so let's be quite clear, <coughs> money if delivered, will reduce debt, will en enable us to make greater investment in infrastructure. And the Simple purpose of those that. funds at the time were for public transport and stormwater. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to Don't keep it going. Thank you for reminding us that, Councillor Fletcher. We're trying to keep it going as best we can right. with, with the further investment. So we've got any, anything else, Councillor Fletcher? No, no that, I, I'm happy to participate in the debate, but I just wanted, I think it is important we actually understand the history to things at times, otherwise we tend to take them for granted. Yep. History is a great teacher. It is. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Mr Chair. Can you just confirm, as well as the benefits if, uh, uh, that are outlined in the report uh, from the sale of the proceeds, if that goes ahead, that we're also saving ourselves uh, $1.5 million um, in administering this fund? which we pay out to somebody else on top of the staff time. Through you, Chair, yes, that's correct. Councillor Cooper. Um, are we questions or debate? Uh, still questions, but... I'm happy to move last, it so we can debate it. No, I don't have a question, but I just put my hand up because the, the long line will be long. Uh, it's moved by Councillor Simpson. You're seconding, but you're now first off the rank. Thank you. Um, for me, if, I, if you do look at page 17, it's not Cameron's comment, it's um, EY with the yellow pages, um, and if you look at it, it talk, we talk about rainy day, it talks about the fact that if we wait for a rainy day in a global sense, our shares won't be worth much, and for me I'm very jittery about the global markets, with, you know, we've got Germany's election coming up, we don't know what's going to happen there, we've got a new France, we don't know what's going to happen there, America, goodness knows what's going to happen there. England, we don't know what's going to happen there. And most of these um, shares get, are international time. shares. Um, I think we're probably going to get one of the best prices now. It's already reduced slightly. Yeah. I don't think we wait for a global shock to sell because we will actually lose huge amounts of money. And I'm really glad to hear Excuse Councillor me. Fletcher talk about public transport and stormwater because those are the very issues we're grappling with. So thank you for yeah. fighting for that fund, Councillor Fletcher. So now we can use it. but. I do, you know, I really take on board, and as I did at the time when we had those reports done, um, you know, we need this money, and also with a 2.5% um, rates increase that we passed and will finally pass in, at the end of the month, um, we don't have a lot of room for borrowing. So we do need to release some funds so we can borrow to do the things we need to do, and I think Aucklanders expect us to keep building things, that's what we do building pipes, building roads for all the houses that everybody's screaming out for and are being built. So for me it's so important and we spent a lot of money on those reports but they, they needed to be done, absolutely, but now we need to use them as a template for going forward. So for me I absolutely support this. Um, I want us to be able to borrow, I want us to pay down debt and I want us to then be able to have room to borrow again and I feel confident that if we did have some sort of um, catastrophe where we needed a lot of money in a hurry. We've got that facility. Um, so I think we're probably doing the best thing we can do right now. And we're managing the risk as best we can. So um, I want to thank you for um, having this brought forward, um, Mr Chairman and Mr Mayor, that you've got the appetite for this, because I think it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Cooper, Councillor Watson. Um, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, when I read this agenda item, I, I, I kind of uh, think of the Scottish miners who, who during the Thatcher years, uh, in the closing down of the coal industry, received quite a, a number of, for them anyway, were big redundancy payments. Um, 
And in a number of instances, those redundancy payments ended up going over the bar in a very short space of time. So some of the men got quite substantial payments and in a very short time they, they were gone and then they faced the, the rather bleak prospect of, of literally decades of, of unemployment with nothing to sustain them and their families. We have got this, this fund here which as recently as last year was valued at $355 million. It had returned an average of 9.6 per cent per annum since nine, 2012 and it was managed to enable a, a drawdown of $23 million <coughs> a year. And when I think of just a few weeks ago the, the great furore and, and difficulty over trying to recoup $13 million, just a little over $13 million, <laughs> uh, via the targeted rate, and, and here we have a, a fund, a facility that gives us nearly double that, and um, we're looking to, to flick it on. We've already flicked about a third of it off, but we're, we're looking to finish off the job today. And that fund had been managed previously by, as Councillor Lee mentioned, um, Auckland Council Investments Limited. And if you look at uh, some of their uh, <coughs> prospectuses, if you go back and look at a few of those prospectuses um, over the last few years, they, they present quite a different story of this fund and investment generally. In terms of investments, um, their asset, they increased the asset value when they were man managing all these funds and, and the other investments from over 1.5 billion to 2.4 billion. Um, <coughs> time, they'd paid out 244 million of dividends and just over 50 million from investment portfolio. So by anyone's uh, calculation, that was an impressive performance. But more particularly with respect of this fund, if you look at their prospectuses, they say um, of this portfolio, and I quote this verbatim, the diversified um, financial assets portfolio provides a significant return on investment <coughs> and contributes to the improved liquidity position and the credit rating of Auckland Council. So there we go. Significant return on investment, <coughs> improved liquidity, and improved credit rating. Three, three out of three. A, a, a rather different scenario, I would suggest, than the, than the bleak picture of the DFA's future under the present regime. That was the professionals that were managing our fund, our CCO. And I, as I understand the CCOs, they were set up because of the, the expertise that they brought to their various uh, areas of concern. Their expertise was to do with managing funds such as this DFA. Uh, and their, their comments on its importance uh, and its uh, aid to Council's financial position couldn't have been much clearer than that. Um, now, as I said, we're getting told quite a different picture, you know, a picture where uh, we, 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 we are led to believe that uh, in divesting ourselves of this portfolio, this is going to ha somehow be a better outcome into the generic, generic field of infrastructure. What infrastructure? Yeah. What, what specific projects are earmarked? <coughs> the 100 million that's gone, what infrastructure did that build? <laughs> As I understand it, it was into the, you know, the debt ether, just woof, just gone. CR, uh, CRL, it's another 250 million cost that's been added on to it, just like that, from what we're getting told a year ago. Is, is it going to go into that? Is it all going to go into that? So which infrastructure projects are this, is this tagged to that we know in advance? A little bit like the interim, interim transport levy. It's just nonsense. What, what, which projects did that go into? Does anyone know? There was, there was, there was, well, there were, I know, yeah, yeah. Councillor Dar that's a, it's a rhetorical yeah. question, Mr Chair. Well, well we're actually past the question time. Then. This is debate and opinion. It's so. a rhetorical question. Rhetorical question is a linguistic device that can be used <laughs> in debate. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real question. <laughs> no. okay. So, Councillor Darby, you want to ask... Uh, no, no, no I said truth. it's a rhetorical question. I don't need him to answer. They don't have a rhetorical answer. Truth get in the way of a good rhetorical question. Yeah, well, I... Don't take a teacher on. No. No. So what... They've got a union. Attempting to move towards, by way of conclusion, Mr Chair, is um, 
is a scenario whereby this fund, and as Councillor Fletcher duly uh, observed in her questioning, which had been set aside by our predecessors, a substantial sum of money, an asset, dare I say it, a strategic asset to, no, strategic. to provide for our infrastructure in the future, um, and no doubt um, accumulated at some cost with some effort, is just going to be gone in this council in a little over a year. $330, $40 million, woof, just, just gone. $100 million of it's gone already. It was meant to be managed over three years. Now it's going to get uh, looted in a little over a year. We're getting told it's infrastructure. Infrastructure, that's the catchphrase for everything now. We, we, we don't know what infrastructure, though. We're just going to have to rest assured it is going to be some budget. valuable in infrastructure. I would have thought it might have been desirable to know exactly what it's being tagged to in advance. That's not happening. It goes against the backdrop where the professionals who are administrating the fund have told us in their prospectuses, which I assume have a, a degree of credibility to them, that this fund was incredibly valuable for both return, um, for credit writing, and for liquidity. So in light of all those uh, factors, Mr Chair, I think this, this fund or what remains of it should be retained. And I think that would be the message that would be echoed by Aucklanders if they'd ever been given a chance to comment on this, which of course they weren't. So I'll be voting against it. Right, we'll just get John to clarify one thing, but my understanding is, Council Fletcher, you could reinforce this, that the Northern Busway or whatever, that wasn't built on the interest, that was built on divesting some of that fund to build that? Or was yes. it built on the interest? It, it w the way that Infrastructure Auckland administered the funds, yep. um, there was interest, but there were also the expenditure of some of the capital. Okay, so they, were realising, they were realising the funds over those years in order to build infrastructure, is that correct? Yes, that, that is... That right. Is John, could you just also confirm one other thing there, because John was a little bit of a pejorative um, comment there about the running of the portfolio by um, yourself and, and the council team. Could you just reinforce what you said 15, 20 minutes ago, that it's run by exactly look. the same managers, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, look, yes, just through you, Chief, just reconfirm. It's, it's managed in exactly the same way, exactly the same... Um, group of fund managers and investment advisors. So the return that we're generating now is linked to the, the markets. It's not linked in any way to a change in responsibility for it from ACIL to um, Auckland Council. Just another couple of points, just to clarify that credit rating point of view. Now the reason that that report said that it helped the credit rating was because it was supporting liquidity. Mm. Now. If we're adding to our standbys, which is supporting liquidity, it's that liquidity which is supporting the credit rating. It's not the fact that we actually have a portfolio of bonds and stocks that supports the credit rating. The other thing to bear in mind is this, if we do use this for infrastructure investment, all we're really doing in reality is swapping one asset, so an asset of financial assets, for another asset, which is presumably roads, water, sorry, that sort of thing. Point of order, Mr that Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt the officer. I thought we're in debate now, and to have a circumstance where Obviously. the office is act almost acting as a, an advocate here, I don't think that's an appropriate. No, no, I just asked, we'll, him, we'll to I well, asked him to reinforce something that you... We'd you finish the question. I thought we'd finish Do your questions. own debating, Mr Chairman. Yeah. 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 Oh. So we have Councillor Sayers. Thank you, John. Is that a Councillor Sayers? Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just, just a bit of clarification, um, John. If we, if we create... Um, $130 million of extra headroom now, uh, do, do we then, are we able to apply that um, 2.7 back to in terms of future borrowings or have we only created the uh, $130 million? Now, Matthew Chair, how, how it will work in reality, if you have, say, we free up $100 million of the diversified asset portfolio, in simple terms, because that was earning a return in the long run of 7%, um, you multiply that. 7% times 100 million is 7 million, times that by 2.7, you get around 17 million. You'll free up debt capacity uh, of roughly sort of 83 to 85 million. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And probably my other question was more of an open question, uh, just picking up at the points of uh, Councillor Fletcher and Councillor Watson. Um, 
in terms of the opportunity perhaps of ring, ring fencing this in terms of the uh, recommendations to public transport or stormwater? Just an open question, Mr Chair. So I have Councillor Cashmore, Casey, Hulse, Fletcher, Quax. Councillor Cashmore. Thanks, Mr Chair. And uh, thanks, John, for the presentation. It, it's potentially a contentious issue, but we've actually already been down this track for the past 18 months or more anyway. The fund started substantially higher than where it was. And it was a fund, as Fletcher, Councillor Fletcher has said, that was for the investment for the benefit of Aucklanders going forward. Historically, we are now facing population growth of record proportions. We haven't seen that for the, this sort of population growth in this city's history. The return on the investment currently sits net of all charges, means it's absolutely just about flat lining. And the released funds, it is an asset swap. We are going to get investment into the critical things that we need in the city. And because of that high population growth, it will be infrastructure. Aucklanders want better PT. They want better bus services, they want better arterial roads, and they want cleaner water. And so do we all. By holding on to a fund for historical reasons that is not returning any great sufficiency, that potentially without expending it, the cost of not using that money, in other words, the opportunity cost of not using that money is far greater than any return from it, makes holding on completely nonsensical. And you will remember, councillors, who were around this table the last term when we did the long-term plan, and the interim transport levy, there was a red line through the project list yep. that said this is as far as we can go. There was a red line. And the interim transport levy enabled that red line to fall down the page and enabled another $523 million worth of projects be delivered over three years. And there was some project in every ward, and I can't remember the list, but it's still in my office. Every ward received some sort of gain. $523 million. This sort of fund is what we need to help release our assets to provide meeting that opportunity cost and to help solve some of the issues that we have facing the city with growth, with lack of investment from the past, a deficit of investment that we're still playing catch up with, and will also enable us to present a, a solid face of proactivity in projects. I would suggest that to not divest this fund for historical or emotional reasons would be a dereliction of duty. And we need to actually be front-footing the growth that the city got and taking the opportunity that comes with that growth. Councillor Casey. This fund belongs to the people of Auckland. I don't hear from the people of Auckland that they want this fund to be hawked off. I haven't heard a single person tell me that we should be selling down a revenue, a revenue earning asset. And I'm looking at you, John, but you're just my focal point, right? <laughs> I haven't heard anybody tell me that. In fact, quite the opposite. I think the people of Auckland are quite nervous at the moment. We've got Michael Burnett in today's paper say, saying that we should sell off the port and water care. We've got the Auckland Airport shares, which Ernst and Young and Cameron Partners would love to see us get rid of. This isn't on a strategic asset register, which means we don't have due obligation to consult with the people of Auckland. But we have a moral Point obligation order, to the people Point of Auckland. Point of order, Mr Chairman. I th every I think time, Dick, Dick. Every time. Well, I think your characterisation of... It's not a EY point of order. And not a point of order. Order. That's what he point does. Of Fictitious order? points of order to put me off my stride. Yeah. No, no. You shouldn't do it, Dick. I think, the, I think the language is... The language is no, that's not a point of order, order either. <laughs> Knock it off. We'll let, we'll let it flow a bit. Let oh, it flow. It's a debating point, okay. not a point of order. Well well done. Casey. I'll start again, shall I? <laughs> only got five minutes, Cam. This fund belongs to the people of Auckland. 
I don't see the public benches there filled with people clamouring for us to sell down a revenue earning asset. That's the point of the airport shares. That's the point of the port. It earns us money year on year on year. We should not be playing cash converters with public assets, strategic or otherwise. And it's only not on the strategic assets register because we were too stupid to put it, to not to put it on there. I can't even remember when we decided what were strategic assets and what, what weren't. But for, damn sh for, for absolute sure, I want to look at that strategic asset register now and make sure everything that should be on it is on it. Because I tell you what, the feeling right now is if it ain't nailed down, it's going to go to the highest bidder or the lowest bidder, but it's certainly going to go out the window. And that's what worries me immensely about this. $130 million we're about to hawk off. We're about to, in, in less than 10 minutes, $130 million is a lot of money. It's an asset. It's a, it's a lot of money to be hawking off on, oh, I'm lost. Thanks, Dick. One of these times I would really like to start a speech and finish it. Without that, maybe come back to me because there's a few other points I wanted to make. Would you would you allow that? Yeah, I will allow that. Councillor Thank you, <coughs> Councillor House. I don't write them down, Dick. It just comes off the top, and you do it every time. Yeah, that's not fair. It's not. Is it my point of order, Mr. Chair. No, <laughs> it's another, one. Like another one. Point of order, Mr. What Chairman. What number of point, point of order is it? Point of order. What number is it? It is up to the chair to determine it's whether the point, point of order chair. is legitimate, is not, not from uh, Councillor Lee or Councillor Casey. Councillor Clax. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. For the standing orders. Councillor Hobbs. You're the chair. To decide. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This was always going to be something that kind of raised um, the energy levels, but I, I'd like to take us back to the real issue, which is what this fund is all about. And I, I agree with, with John Watson. We need to be very clear on why we're doing this. And I'm very, very clear on why we're doing this. We basically have a huge amount of need and we've got no debt headroom within which to operate the city at, a, at its full capacity. We've got um, stormwater problems that our community, that's what they're clamouring about. People don't want poo on the beaches in Mission Bay. They don't want Cox's Creek in the state that it's in. They don't want the signs going up in Takapuna and in Piha. People want us to simply fix these issues. And I don't see the benches full of people telling us not to sell down this investment portfolio. Mostly people are telling us to simply get on and fix Auckland. Can we please have swimmable beaches, creeks that you can feel proud of, and harbours that are sustainable for future generations? And that's what this fund is for. I think we're making a meal out of the politics of this, and I'm very concerned that we're somehow conflating the sale of the airport shares, the port and water care, for God's sake, into this discussion. That's nonsense. I'll be out on the streets protesting against the sale of water care. I can tell you I think that's a ridiculous thing for anyone even to float. So let, let's not be diverted. This is simply what this fund was for. As Councillor Fletcher said, it's to deal to infrastructure. I can tell you exactly what Waitakere spent its portion of the Infrastructure Auckland funding on, and thank you very much to those people who were involved. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. That money was well spent, and we're still seeing the benefits of it. It's a dereliction of our duty not to face up to the infrastructure needs in the in the city. We've upzoned Auckland. Our brownfields areas in particular need our investment. We're working through the HIF fund and other things to deal with some of our green fields. Our brownfields desperately need our, in, our investment because they're the areas that we need to be looking at um, building in first. And it's this infrastructure funding that's going to be available to deal to those. So, Mr Chair, I have... Um, no problem in voting for this. I think it's actually my job to get on and fix Auckland. And when we are severely constrained by our financial ability to do so, we need to look at everything that's available to us. I think we are constructing mythology around this fund. 
It's simply there to do a job. We've got the standby fund if we desperately need something in an emergency. We need to build the right assets to build a good city for future generations. And I think it's an exceedingly narrow-minded view of the world to save money in the bank while the family starves. I think we need to deal with now and keep an eye on the Auckland that we're leaving for future generations. Thank you, Mr Chair. Councillor Hulse, Councillor Fletcher. Gosh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I want to just revisit further, just so people really understand this fund, because I think if we had le actually left it named as the Infrastructure Auckland Fund, there wouldn't be the controversy that appears to be around the table today. But it dates back to 1996. Um, as Minister, we put through the capital depreciation requirements for local government. 1997, we were looking at the assets um, of the Auckland Regional Council. Uh, that was Phil Warren as the chair at that time. And a Treasury officer leaked to me a report that the government were going to do a share giveaway on those. And there had been a lot of controversy. Um, uh, Auckland was misunderstood, as it remains 20 years later. Um, I resigned, so I put myself on the back bench so that I could actually cross the floor, because as a Cabinet Minister, you could not cross the floor of the House, although I note that subsequently some have, but there was a convention you didn't do that. And to date, that remains the only government bill in history uh, that was lost. So that fund was set up. Part of it was put into the Art Regional Fund, which has enabled quite a lot of initiatives in terms of art. And the sole purpose of that fund was to fund stormwater and public transport, not roads. It was stormwater and public transport. So if you look across Auckland, it was in designed before we talked about partnerships. I'd actually been the beneficiary of a British government public-private partnerships program, and I'd spent a month in the UK looking at the opportunities, and I knew that we needed seeding funds. So it was designed to encourage partnerships. And those, those funds were used in a lot of really creative ways. I've already highlighted the North Shore Busway, but you wouldn't have got Britomart off the ground, you know, twin streams, which we've heard about. So here we are 20 years on. We rename things, and nobody's got a clue what they were intended for, but it was solely intended for um, the building of infrastructure in Auckland. And yes, today we're getting 142 people coming in. We've had 174,000 since amalgamation. I can see the need for that infrastructure. So uh, as the, the sort of mother, if you like, of that fund, I feel particularly um, strongly about the fact as long as those funds are being directed in terms of their original purpose, having had the privilege of sitting on the board of Auckland Transport and fighting for you for the EMUs and integrated ticketing and so forth, I could go on and on and on. We have still got so much more to do in terms of gating, in terms of grade separation, and uh, I could go on and on and on about that. But they are the things that the public have been clamouring for us to get on and do. Now, in officer's report, this is clearly a case of deficiency, no offence to the officer present, but the fact that you don't know the history, the fact that you didn't articulate that it, it, it was designed there for the building of infrastructure, if it had been presented in such a way, I think everyone would have supported it unanimously, which is why I'm going to support it. I can see the need in Auckland um, the, 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 the business case, um, the project prioritisation tools, everything that we know now that's led up to ATAP, we need to be able to move forward. These funds are going to provide part of that. So I don't see it as giving away the family silver. It's just reinvesting in some solid gold. And we need to do that if Auckland's going to go ahead. So I would encourage everyone to vote for this today, but I would encourage officers to know the history to these funds and for them to be presented in such a way that the public can understand what the purpose of the funds were in the first place, because it would have perhaps alleviated some of the confusion that we're seeing. Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. <coughs> Councillor Quacks, who's now... Yeah. Speeding towards the tape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
<clears throat> I, th I can see this is quite an uh, emotional issue for some councillors, and uh, but it's it's not for me. Um, and, and I think Councillor Hulse probably okay, put it great. most uh, most eloquently, um, because for better or for worse, um, this council uh, is a is an infrastructure provider, and. <clears throat> I, I don't think that this $100 million um, that was taken out of the fund prior, uh, somebody might put me correct here, but it wasn't looted, as has been suggested. Um, so, and I'd like, to, I'd like to also say that I don't believe that EY and Cameron Partners would love to see us sell assets. I think they gave us some advice, uh, which we can take or we can dis discard. But I don't think they ever said that they would love to see us, or anybody said that they would love to see us um, sell, sell these assets. But <clears throat> can I just say that last night, um, Councillor Stewart and I were at the local board meeting, and there was a group of people there from what's known as the list and catchment. They, as a result of storms and as a result of intensification in that list and catchment, um, the streams uh, down there is eroding to such an extent that people are in danger of losing their houses. Infrastructure has not been provided to cope with the extra housing, the extra population in that area. And that's the same, that's just an isolated case, the same as happening all over this region. And we need to understand that we need to provide infrastructure. Uh, the growing population has been uh, referred to by both Councillors Cashmore and Councillor Hulse uh, is placing stress on the infrastructure that we have, but it's also a requirement for new infrastructure. So I'm, if we weren't in a cash-constrained situation, and if our balance sheet was a healthy balance sheet, I'd probably say perhaps it's, it's a reasonable thing to have um, this portfolio. But we are not in that happy position. We're in a position of being cash constrained. We're in a position of providing, uh, not being able to provide the infrastructure that we desperately need. So I'm, I'm happy to see uh, us sell this down. Uh, I think that as a, if you're a, fa if you're, if you look at this as a, a family, It'd be like the family living in the back of a car and having a million dollars in the bank, mm -hmm. because that's exactly the way that's exactly the way this is at the moment. We need money desperately to provide for the Auckland family. We're not doing that, and it would be irresponsible of us not to use this fund to pay for the infrastructure that we desperately need, that the people in the Liston catchment need, that the people in New Lynn need, that the people all over this region need. And that is what we are here for. For better or for worse, we are infrastructure providers, and we need to provide infrastructure. Councillor Quacks, Councillor Lee, Mike Lee. I think, thank you, Mr Chairman. <coughs> Well, it's uh, a sad day for me uh, to see this uh, this diversified asset fund uh, was a legacy handed down by the former Auckland Regional Council. And what was in that fund was created by Aucklanders long since gone. It was an infrastructure fund. As, as some members have pointed out, and uh, intelligently managed and with judicious grants, it enabled the North Shore Busway, it enabled the Britomart Transport Centre, and most of all, 
and the, the thing that I had m most to do with because of this fund, the rebuilding of Auckland's metro rail system, which was on the brink of extinction, uh, to what it is today. Now, under the management of ACL, the report says that the fund earned 9.1% um, per annum. Um, in the appendix, it's, it's talking about 12.1%, but whatever, uh, performed very, very, very well indeed. Um, it's now down to 5.8%, which is, is disappointing, given market conditions in New Zealand and around the world the last year or so. However, um, we can only speculate why th th that happened. Um, and I offer that perhaps what has already been stripped out were probably some of the best earners. But I don't know. We don't have any information on that. But the key point here, as Simon Allen reminded me, is this fund earns more than what we pay in debt. And to spend it down is actually deliberately destroying value, which members, councils should not do. There's another aspect to this which unfortunately hasn't been touched on by the report. The report talks a lot about um, our debt and about credit rating and, and debt limits but it doesn't make the very important point that having these diversified income earning assets actually is a tick uh, for the credit ratings um, in any credit rating organisation. Removing them is the opposite. It weakens our credit rating. That's not rocket science for, for Aucklanders. Um, they understand that and members around the table should understand that. They should also understand to be very uh, sceptical of, of talk about it's only an asset swap. The first point, as Councillor Watson pointed out, is we haven't seen um, what this the spend up has, has produced over the last year. There's been no report on where that money actually went in terms of infrastructure or assets. But you cannot equate an asset that earns money, especially earns money offshore, not from Aucklanders so much, but from the international market. You can't equate that uh, and say it's an asset swap. We know what it is. We don't, what, we don't know what, what was swapped, if anything, and call it a swap when the assets that we are buying cost money, lose money. Um, year on year, and that's a whole, the reason why it, these assets cost so much is a, is a whole uh, separate discussion. So what we are doing is taking away an alternative stream of income from this council, not just now, but forever. So let's take the CRL, um, which is an essential piece of infrastructure, an essential asset, one of the great achievements of, of Len Brown and, and the early Auckland Council. Um, that's going to cost, last time I heard, about 30 million a year to operate. Where's that money going to come from? That's, that's equivalent to um, a 2% rates increase. So, you know, we, we are actually asset stripping. The, if we are really, I've heard a lot about infrastructure and I think members are of a mind and in, in agreement that we do need to invest in infrastructure, even though it will cost. Um, but wouldn't it be more intelligent? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be more financially smart to actually retain those assets and augment it, the offshore income with the dividend streams from Ports of Auckland and Auckland Airport and call it a real infrastructure fund and guard it as such and manage it judiciously as such and build our infrastructure from it. 
uh, I recall our debate over the, the targeted rate um, affair, which is meant to bring in 13 million, uh, which will be uh, the core of, of, uh, of uh, 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 the Mayor's infrastructure fund. And he points out that it's not just the 13 million, you can borrow you know, maybe 100 million with that 13 million, which is, which is true. But um, how about the diversified assets with their income and that asset base and the port and the airport? Now you're talking seriously about infrastructure. If you are, if you are fair dinkum about infrastructure, removing or destroying this asset base, I, I think, is not only financially imprudent, um, but also there's a moral question here. Those assets were handed down to us. Is our moral right to manage them as efficiently and uh, prudently as possible, then hand on that income stream to future Aucklanders? What I'm concerned about is that history will find us guilty, this council willfully guilty, of intergenerational theft. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. It'd be worse if we don't build the infrastructure, won't it? <clears throat> Come here, Goff. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I'm, I'm not sure about intergenerational theft. Uh, if this was a fund set up as an infrastructure fund and the proceeds from the divestment of the fund is to repay debt to enable us to borrow so that we can create more infrastructure, that's not theft. That's a sensible thing for this council to do. We are not talking about strategic assets here. We're talking about shares and bonds. As far as I know, it's not part of the core role of council to be an investment banker. We could, if we like, borrow, buy more shares and bonds and say we're making a good financial return. But I don't think I've ever been approached by a constituent that says they want Auckland Council to buy more shares and bonds and not to invest in infrastructure. I know what the constituents I deal with on a daily and weekly basis are saying to me. They say Council has to get on and do what it can to invest in the infrastructure we need for more homes and better transport systems. I have no emotional attachment to shares and bonds whatsoever. I disagree. I disagree strongly with Cameron Partners about saying, let's just hock off the actual infrastructure assets, the strategic assets. They are Watercare. They are Auckland International Airport Limited. Port. Nobody Under ever, port. nobody ever described shares and bonds as a strategic asset. And yeah, look, they were a reasonable investment while they were waiting there to be used for a purpose for which Auckland Council could use them. They were getting 9.1%. The market's come down. It's now 58 If we have an international event or if we have a downturn, it may be in the negative. We may start losing on it. That's what happens with shares and bonds. We're not in the business of being investment bankers. We are in the business of building infrastructure for this city. This council has already made the decision to divest itself of two-thirds of this fund. It did that uh, the year before last and last year. We're now talking about the remnants of a fund for which we spend 1.5 million a year in administrative costs. Uh, interest rates, people have said, oh, look, you get more off the return on this th than interest rates. Interest rates are at an historic low. But read your document here, and your document says the long-term plan sets interest rates at 6%. That's actually more than the return we're getting on these shares uh, and bonds. And if there's a downturn, don't we need this fund for liquidity purposes? The trouble if there is a downturn, then the value goes out of the very things that you're relying on for liquidity support. The value will go right out of them at the very time you need to liquefy them. They'll be hard to liquefy because nobody's buying and everybody's selling. Far better to have uh, the, the more sensible way of a standby facility in terms of providing for that. So I have no problem at all with selling shares and stocks in order to pay down debt to give us that, that extra ability subsequently to borrow without hitting the debt to revenue ratios. 
I also ha have a problem if I go back to our constituents and say, I want to rate you more, and they say, why? Oh, I want to invest in some more shares and, and bonds. I know what they'd tell me. They'd say, you've got your job wrong. You've got your priorities Won't wrong. Be in your job. If I go to, <coughs> no, no, this, isn't, this actually isn't to be interrupted. This is my, my little space of time. Um, if, you, if I go to government, and I'm going to government constantly, and I'm saying, listen, you guys, um, we need more revenue sources, which we do, and we need more revenue sharing, which we do. Uh, we need to invest desperately because we've got an ATAP, ATAP deficit of $7 billion. And when I do that, I do it in good faith. But if they come back to me and say, hang on, you, you, you had this fund of shares and, and bonds, you want to keep that to get the revenue off it, but you want us to meet the cost of investment, I'm not sure I have the moral high ground when I go to government on that basis. Uh, I think it is, in fact, our Achilles heel. I want to separate this absolutely from the question of uh, AIAL uh, and water care. And I want to do that the because ports. they are they are basic strategic assets in monopoly areas that we need to control. Uh, and we get, a, and we get a, a return on it and a much lower rate of risk. So I, d I don't accept the Cameron partners' logical extension to their argument. We'd sell every bloody thing if we followed that logical extension. But we have no, no strong grounds for retaining this asset, which is now much diminished, which is costing us more, actually in administrative fees, when we are just about to hit the limit of our debt to revenue ratio. And for those that very kindly mentioned the targeted rate on accommodation, um, yeah, you're right, it does bring us more ability, uh, Mike, to borrow, which is why I wondered why you voted against that uh, in, when, when we had that issue before us. So I think the logical thing to do is to divest ourselves of our shares and bonds, to put it into paying off debt, to put it, put it into capex expenditure we are then enabled to make in what our constituents demand of us as our core role and responsibility. Now, um, I have Councillor <coughs> Casey, Darby, Stewart, Sayers and Hills, but I'll just draw everyone's attention to a new C which the mover has agreed to be added and that's been um, worded by Wordsmith by uh, Councillor Sayers and Councillor Cooper, you're happy with C to go in there? Um, Mr Chairman, I'm very happy because if you look in the report, points 21, 26, 27 all deal with the fact that it's accelerating infrastructure investment and that's what the, that's what the resolution is saying. It talks every, all the time. It's all about infrastructure investment. That's Council the purpose. Councillor Cooper, you're happy with that to go? Yes. Yep. Okay, so Councillor Casey. Uh, can I just raise a point of order on that, uh, Mr Chairman? Does that mean that we could not use the proceeds of these shares and bonds to, uh, to actually repay debt? That indirectly then allows us to do that, but I just want to make sure, yep. I want to clarify what that, that uh, Resolution C means. It's the second of that. Matt, Matt, Matthew, thank you. Um, through the Chair, so um, let me give some, some clarity. Um, so in, in a situation where we sell down or we were to sell down the final 130 million on the day of that transaction, we'd have 130 million of cash. To give effect to this resolution, which we're quite comfortable with in terms of how we can operationalise that, we would effectively, if you like, create a reserve fund. Mm -hmm. That means we could only draw down on that fund to support public transport and stormwater projects. On day one, in the act of creating that fund and the Treasury having that cash on our balance sheet, net debt does reduce. Council's debt does go down. That, that comes and you're then, then you're in a position where that reserve fund is able to support infrastructure investment in these categories. That's, that's, that's fine. That's, that's a good I explanation. Yeah. Councillor Casey, you... Oh, there was only one point that I didn't make when uh, Dick interrupted me rudely. And that was that there's a lot of talk today about what is core business of Auckland Council. And the Mayor mentioned it. Ernst and Young and Cameron Partners tell us that this is not our core business, so should, we shouldn't be going near it. Well, actually, our core business as Auckland Council is the prudent management of public assets. Selling off the family silver is not prudent management of public assets. And I should add, revenue 
earning public assets because that doesn't seem to come up a lot today. It brings in money. It has done more or less over the years. So that's all I wanted to say. That is our core business. And it's not up to some tin pot consultant to tell us what is and is not our core business. So just so we're quite clear about those reports, we will be having workshops on those reports in August, which will be on the way to informing the LTP. So that's when we will have the dis discussion on those reports and whether we enact or do anything further on the advice in those reports. So, Mr. Mr. Clare, Mr. Chair, a point of clarification uh, around standing orders, please. Uh, Councillor Casey has now spoken twice uh, to this item. Yeah, and Quacks, the standing orders are quite clear around the number of times that a member can speak <coughs> to an item in the count committees of the whole. Point the of order, committee. Mr Chairman. This issue has oh. been ruled on by yourself. Oh, I, that's what I'm about to say is that I'm sorry. I, I, did, I felt as though Councillor Casey was upset and I allowed her to get the chance to speak again. I think it's worked out I think well. The standing orders are now. Councillor Darby. Thank you. Probably just a clarification still on the C because of the wording I'm not clear on at the moment. And I want to follow this up. The intention, question here, is to pay down debt, mm. to create headroom, to invest in primarily public transport and stormwater infrastructure. I don't think those words say that, though, and I think they need to be worked up to be more specific. It's, it says there to transfer that value directly to public transport. I, that's just my own opinion. Because the intention has got to be really clear here. The second question is, um, and I should have asked it before, before we enter the debate, is the resolutions give effectively 10 calendar days to sell down the fund of 130 million? Mm -hmm. 18. 18. 18. 18. We put in 2018 so that. Oh, sorry, 18. So my, that these my, calculations my, my error. go into my the error. LTP. So okay. when they come back with the budget figures, um, that would be in there even if we haven't sold it. But the, the assumption would be there that it could okay. be or would be. Yeah. My error. Uh, look, just speaking in support, originally when this came up, and I think it, we first discussed this possibility about three years ago. I was, I was not in support of selling down this fund. I raised concern about how we were insulated from a, a major disaster. Uh, we subsequently had discussions about a captive insurance scheme that was ultimately deemed quite inefficient. Um, coincidentally, we're discussing more efficient means of how we might insure ourselves um, on our public excluded agenda today. Uh, in renewing our insurances and through our workshops and I've learned that we are better covered in that space. So in some ways I am much more comfortable uh, in the course that we've navigated over the last couple of years in understanding this. So I'm supporting this today, Chair, because I'm, I'm confident that in my view we have addressed the risks and we haven't rushed into this. We haven't rushed to hock off something, as um, members have, or a member has suggested. We've actually considered it uh, in, a, in a comprehensive way over a very long period. It is not just a two-day decision. But, of course, you need to come to a two-day decision. One of the things that concerned me was just how we were covered in terms of liquidity support. And we've had the answer to that, that today. And that is one of the principal requirements of this fund. That's what it's there for, to offer liquidity support. So we've been told there is other means of liquidity support uh, being provided through extension of the uh, $900 million standby facility. Um, and then the, the fund is also there to meet unforeseen events. And um, I guess... The unforeseen event, no, it's not. It's been coming at us, but I think we've finally got to understand the, and grab the missions critical that are facing us in public transport and housing. 
inextricably linked at the hip. They are one and the same. And ask any Aucklander what they want us to invest in, and I'm sure 95% of them will say without hesitation, please address public transport and housing. It's desperate. And that's where we will see, even though housing is not mentioned there in the C, the public transport links it to addressing, enabling housing development. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm absolutely comfortable, Mr Chair, after, th I think, three years discussing this, where we've arrived at here is the right place. It is not hocking off 100, it's actually 130. It is transferring the value of that to where we critically need it in public transport infrastructure and housing. There was a rhetorical question, and uh, of course we can always answer rhetorical questions when it's our speaking turn, can't we? Um, and I do want to just have a look at where that interim transport levy went. And if members are, are not aware of it, um, we actually um, won handsomely in the interim transport levy allocation. We have, we're just about to break 90 million public, trans pa public transport passenger journeys. That interim transport levy sought an additional 1.8 million. We've actually surpassed it. We've invested in Councillor Watson, for your benefit, Silverdale bus, uh, bus station mm. park and ride. Really? That was part of it. Yeah. There was some 40, 600 new bus stops uh, that was part of it. 45 kilometres of bus lanes, 42 kilometres of the cycle network, the strategic cycle network. Look, I won't bore you with the rest, but the list goes on. Um, but I think it is fair to say that, um, and I will follow this up, Councillor Watson, I think we should get a status report on the interim transport levy yep. delivery. And uh, that, so that is a fair question, and for the planning committee, I'll, I'll follow up on that. But that's, uh, that was a risk at the time, but boy, uh, did we make the right call in that space. Imagine Auckland right now, if we had not have invested two and a bit years ago, two, well, two years ago, in a big boost in public transport. And they were significant numbers as well. We went from 43 million to... Um, 213 million in the public transport space. Imagine if we didn't do that. Imagine the gridlock out there on motorways and public transport platforms that there would be. Uh, Auckland would be furious with us if we just stood by and did not act at that time. We have acted, now we have another opportunity to act and we must act and invest this money in the right place. Thank you, Councillor Darby. Councillor Stewart. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm actually going to support this now that I see that C is there, especially when I can see that um, it's for public transport and stormwater and stormwater infrastructure in particular. And just picking up on what Councillor Quax was talking about last night, yes, we did have um, a delegation of people from the listing catchment in, in Howick, the older part of Howick. Um, Howick has had decades of um, and other parts of the region of, of um, not having infrastructure um, upgraded. And if some of you could see um, what is happening in the listing catchment, the storm water that's going through that catchment is coming from most of the older part of Hauk, and it's and it's it's um, it's actually causing some really really serious erosion problems. And after listening to what Councillor Fletcher said about this had actually been set up really for, um, for infrastructure um, and picking up on Councillor uh, Penny Hulse on, on the rainy day, I think the rainy day has come. We're having, uh, as far as stormwater events are concerned, we're having more and more of those. We've got another one on, on its way, apparently. In a few days' time, we're going to have another big event in, in, in probably Auckland, and if, if you were one of those people in the list and catchment, and you could see your house eroding into the, into the stream because of all the other, because of the water that is coming from um, everybody else's property, and we haven't, we haven't kept up with the, the infrastructure, I think, now is the time to do it. But just one, one thing, I will support uh, Councillor Casey and, 
Councillor Mike Lee on the airport shares. It's something that I wouldn't like to see sold. Um, if, if Manukau City and Auckland City had sold those shares all those years ago, this Auckland Council today wouldn't be as in the place that it's in right now. So I will be um, supporting this. I, I, I can see where other people are coming from, but I think at the moment the rainy day is here and if you were one of the people that was suffering like the people in the list and catchment, you would expect us to do something about the decades of no catch up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I have um, Councillor Sayers, Hills and, and Councillor Walker. <coughs> Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I did want to thank uh, the Auckland Council Treasurer, uh, Mr. Bishop, uh, for presenting this paper today and filling the questions. Um, so thank you for that. Um, what it boils down to me, there's two, overall, there's two very key strategic objectives for Auckland Council. One is to reduce its debt, and one is to get back to core business. And uh, so by, by voting in... Um, this resolution today, you know, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be reducing the debt and creating the ability to deliver uh, core council services. So I, I will totally support uh, this, uh, this resolution 100%. The other thing uh, I want to support 100% is really the words of Councillor Fletcher, and that's the reason for, um, for number C up there that may uh, require some modification. But I think it's very important, and thank you, uh, Councillor Fletcher, for pointing out the historical reasons of how this, this uh, fund came into existence. And I think by earmarking it for the purposes that it was intended to, I hope that acknowledges that. Uh, and uh, I just want to uh, support that to the maximum uh, capability that I can today, Mr Chair. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sayers. Councillor Hills. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just quickly, um, I'll be supporting the resolutions. I am opposed to the sale of strategic assets. I think things, you know, like me even mentioning selling water would be ridiculous for any city with water being such a public good. And things like the airport shares in the port and those should, the fact that we should have some say in the incomes coming in from those things is extremely important to this council. But a lot of numbers are being thrown around about what we used to have. I wasn't part of the council who voted to sell down the other parts of the asset pool, but at the moment we've got 130 million. Um, we're earning 5.8, but even if you go to the LTP, that's 9.1 million, but the 6% um, interest is 7.8 million. That leaves us 1.3, and then we spend 1.5 actually um, administering it. So we're actually down 200,000 a year based on the LTP on this small amount of money. So I don't think this should be as divisive as it is. I, I wouldn't, I'm, you know, I think we need to free up this capital in this sense to invest in the infrastructure that people expect us to. That's the only thing I'm getting um, feedback on constantly on social media and public getting yelled at at Takapuna Markets, other things, um, is about investing in infrastructure. And we need to do that now. We can't just keep waiting around. The government and other people are clearly pushing us to sell more important things, but we need to use every single lever and every single thing to show them that we are, are making every decision possible to raise funds and to fund our assets, so then they will hopefully fund more of our assets and f give us more funding tools. So I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hills. We've got Councillor John Walker. Thank you. Many years ago, I was a defender of the airport shares in Manukau City, and thank goodness I was. And thank, thank goodness the council had more sense then, because at the end of the day, that asset's grown up to a share today where it's, it's quite phenomenal and it's money for jam, basically. Auckland City Council sold all their shares off at $3 when they were cleaning up their act and trying to get into, out of debt. They remained out of debt for a very short period of time and now they're back in debt. But common sense says if you've got a lot of money sitting there and you need to spend it elsewhere, it doesn't say you should have it in stock and shares. Because stock and shares are very vulnerable. At the moment, it's an all-time high. And all stock markets, but all-time high can be get an all-time loss too. So I'll be supporting 
the sailing of the shares to, to fund infrastructure because at the end of the day, if we don't, Auckland City is going to be in terrible trouble. I mean, I come on that motorway every day. It takes me an hour and a half to two hours to drive in, two hours at night. I mean, it's disgusting. I'd rather be spend, spend it here rather than sitting in a car. So for that, I support the selling of the shares. Thank you, Councillor Walker. Um, I'm not going to make any comments. I just actually want to pass a reference to, to oh, thanks, way back to Bruce Jesson, who was actually the first politician leading that investment fund. And ironically, Mark Ford was the first <coughs> chief executive. Um, of that fund for several years, and uh, they consolidated it. And as Councillor Fletcher will know, they actually fought off the demand that the whole thing get washed up and distributed um, by the national government at that time. So it survived and it evolved, and 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 then obviously subsequently got invested. So I'd just like to, for the public record, just to mention and thank um, Bruce Jesson and uh, Mark Ford and those others at the AIC at the time. So, um, does the mover want to um, have a right of reply? Or? Oh, look, I'll just keep it very brief. Um, I think everyone said it. I want to also thank um, uh, Mr Bishop. I think when the Treasurer and General Manager of our financial services struggles to find a reason to keep it. Um, the paper speaks for itself. I think um, that reducing debt, creating the ability to deliver core council services, particularly transport and um, Stormwater is something that we are desperately short of. It's tidying up our balance sheet. It's a sensible thing to do, and it will save us a further $1.5 million per year that goes to some share broker. Sorry, Mr share broker, whoever you are. Um, but it's, it's a, an extra saving from that perspective as well, and we've just got to be financially prudent and get on with the job and deliver what Auckland's asking for and what Auckland needs. So Sorry, Mr Chair, just a point of information. Uh, Councillor Darby said he's, he's coming back with information in terms of the uh, transport levy. Could we also uh, have some report back or information back as to what are the assets that the government is demanding that we sell as a, as a show of good faith? Because that's been that's been repeated a number of times by speakers. I don't know what they are, so I'd appreciate knowing what those assets are that they're asking us to. It was just on Q&A Q &A in the Nation. And well, it's, it's, a, rec okay, it's well, a recurring um, comment we hear, Mr Chair. Yep, and, and that will come back in July, August, where we, we were discussing as part of the whole portfolio review, etc. LTP. So I'm going to put the resolution. Does, does people My want division. It? My division. My division. Yep. Councillor Clough. Yes. Councillor Casey. No. Councillor Cashmore. Yes. Councillor Collins? No. Councillor Cooper? Yes. Councillor Darby? All. Councillor Fletcher? Yes. Mayor Goff? Yes. Councillor Hills? Yes. Councillor Hulse? Aye. Councillor Mike Lee? No. Councillor Quacks? Yes. Councillor Sayers? Yes. Councillor Simpson? Or. Councillor Stewart? Yes. Member Taipari? Or. Councillor Sir John Walker? Yes. Councillor Wayne Walker? No. Councillor Watson? No. Okay, so that is carried by 14 to 5. Thank you. And thank you, folks. That was really quite a good debate and appreciate the courtesy shown to everyone. Um, we're actually going to have a five-minute break at this stage because it's a natural break. I know it's not two hours, but we're going to have a five-minute break now because we're clean between that item.